Hey guys, before we start our presentation today in the periodic table, I wanted to take the opportunity to review um, atomic structure and particles and also the Bohr model. So let's first start with the electron. We know the electrical charge of the electron is negative. We know the symbol for negative is an, uh, a minus sign or negative sign. The location is in the electron cloud. We know the mass of an electron. Uh, there are 1,888 electron to equal one proton or one neutron. So let's put that in the fractional form. We know a proton is positive. We know the symbol for positive is the plus sign and the location is in the nucleus. And the relative mass is one. The neutron is neutral. It means it has no charge, so we're going to give it zero for no charge. The location is in the nucleus, and the relative mass is one. Now, how do we take the information that we see on the periodic table for an element and translate that over to a Bohr model? Let's first look at the top number. The top number is the atomic number, which tells us the number of protons that we have in the element. Indirectly, we can infer that we have the same number of electron because we know that in order for an element to be on the periodic table, the charge for that element has to be zero. So we know that we have 15 proton and we have 15 electron. If we look at the number down here, this is the atomic mass. And the atomic mass, we can round up to 31. If we know that the mass is 31, we know that of the, if we know atomic mass is made up of proton and neutron, we know that we can subtract the proton in order to get 16 neutrons. So let's come over here to the Bohr model and we'll say proton is 15, neutron is 16, and but we have to have 15 electron. Let's see how we're gonna do that. Well, first let's review energy levels. We know in the first energy level ring, the most, that we can have is two electron. On the second energy level, the maximum amount that we can have is eight. And on the third, the maximum again is eight electron. So if we start placing our electron one and two, that's the maximum that we can have on that first energy level ring. On the second, let's go ahead and place our eight because we know that two plus eight is 10. But we have 15 that we have to place. So let's jump to the third energy level and let's put five out here. One, two, three, four, five. And last time you heard me talk about valence electrons and valence electrons are the ele electrons that are going to react with other atoms of other elements. So these are the ones that are more reactive than any other electron that's going to be inside the atom. And you find those on the outermost shell. So in this case, the particular atom of phosphorus has five valence electrons. So we have five valence electron. Here's a picture of a periodic table that we're gonna use for our next exercise. So let's fill in this chart. Let's take the element of beryllium. If we go back, we can start to figure out where our elements are placed based on the atomic number. So let's see, okay, so beryllium is four. So if I come down, I'm looking at the atomic number, which is the number at the top. So here's one is hydrogen, two is gonna be helium, three is lithium, let's see, beryllium, four. So we're dealing with the element that is right here. And four is the atomic number, the chemical symbol is going to be BE. So if I come back to my chart, my symbol is a capital B, and a lowercase e because your second letter is always gonna be lowercase and your first one is always gonna be uppercase. The mass number for beryllium is nine. So my mass number is nine. The number of proton is based on the atomic number and that's four. The number of neutron I would figure out by saying nine minus four is going to be five. And I know that in order for an atom of an element to be on the periodic table, the charge has to be zero. So the protons have to equal the electrons, meaning that I should have four electron. Now, I, the next one, I know that with the number of le, uh, 11, that the protons 
are the atomic number. So if I go back and I look for number 11 at the top, it's right here. It's sodium. So sodium has the symbol of Na. So I'm going to go back to my chart and the element is sodium and the symbol is a capital N and a lowercase a. The atomic number is 11 because it has to match the number proton. Let's go back and look at the mass number. The mass number is 22.99, which I can round up to 23. And I'm going to take 23 and subtract 11 in order to figure out my neutrons. And my neutrons are going to be 12. And the number of electron have to equal the number of proton in order for it to have a zero charge. So that number is going to be 11. Next, let's look at the atomic number of six. Let's go back to our periodic table and let's look at six. So I know that the information is right here. So the element is carbon. So I'm going to write carbon. The symbol for carbon is C. Oops. The mass number for carbon is right here. It's 12. So I know the atomic number is 6. The mass number is 12. The number of proton that I have is based on the atomic number, which is 6. And the number of neutron that I have is going to be 12 minus 6 which is going to give me six. And of course, my electron at this point has to match my number of proton in order for the atom to have a charge of zero. So that is going to be six. Okay, guys, now what I want you to do is I want you to complete a quick exercise in a Google form. Um, you are going to be completing just one row, just so that I have an understanding that you understand how this information translates from the periodic table into a chart form and um, I will see you in a few short minutes. Bye guys.